Good morning, afternoon, evening or night, whenever you're watching this, welcome. This will be my third visit to this old dump site. It's been a generous sight so far, with some nice interesting finds, and some of the best condition bottles I've ever seen that have been buried and then come out of the ground. Fingers crossed it's going to be similarly generous today. <laughs> My friends Caroline and Phil of Let's Go With The Johnsons are here too. We're social between shots, rarely ever interacting on camera. So if you want to see what they find today, I'll link their video in the description. Chances are their video came out a long time ago though. I stack my footage high and edit them real slow. What will it be the first find of the day? That perhaps, a clay pipe. It's an ROEB one, I can see the buffalo horns. Looks like it does have quite a big chip out of it. I don't mind, though. Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes, a fraternal secret society who have no royal charter, have never admitted any bovine ungulates, and date from 1822 rather than the pre-biblical flood period that the word antediluvian suggests. Any secret organisation that makes silliness an integral part of their name gets a modicum of approval from me. Some third degree. I think it was once a ball of copper wire. Doesn't feel as though there's any viable metal left in it, so I'll take it. One day I plan to try to refine this stuff back to copper, and until I've actually tried, and inevitably decided it's costly, messy and time-consuming, I'll continue collecting verdigris. Sorry to bring the mood down, but this has to be one of the saddest things I've seen in a dump site. Closed shells of cockles, I think. Marine bivalve mollusks, anyway, taken from the sea to be eaten, and the firmly closed shells suggest strongly that these were not eaten, just taken and discarded. Sadly, that's probably something that still happens often if shellfish aren't sold. This is a stark reminder of how grossly wasteful humans can be, a sad mass grave far from home for these poor sea creatures. I wonder if a bottle digger who stumbled onto this felt similarly sad. This site is wide open with a main road close by, so it gets wind noise and traffic noise and very little birdsong, but the finds do somewhat make up for that. We do keep coming back, after all. Little watercolour paint tray, I think, and a tiny bottle. Ah, it's missing the bottom. Maybe it wasn't quite so tiny when it was intact. Quite a tiny hole. Guess it was just a test dig that didn't bring up much of interest. That looks like maybe a rabbit hole going down through the centre of the spoil pile. I'll leave it be. And on to the next. Please do shout out if you see anything interesting along the way. Little patches of spoil showing through the grass. This site has been bulldozed several times in the past, and the bottle diggers keep coming back. The company that owns this land has tolerated it so far, but they do have plans for a development here, and one day the bulldozers will not just level, but cover the site. A capping layer, maybe clay, then maybe rubble, sand and topsoil, roads, infrastructure and buildings. Nothing is permanent, and the diggers here do know that, which I think is why there's more activity here of late. Blacking pot. Quite a nice thing. I'm not sure if I already have one. I mean, I'm positive I have found one before, but might have given it away. It's in pretty good condition, so okay, I'll take it. I don't have to keep everything I take. Just don't really want it to be crushed by bulldozers. Mm. 
little aqua burst lip bottle. Ah, it has two snails, pretty shell one of them's got, and a slug. I'll leave them be. Anything else of interest? Nah. Oh, actually, no, still no. This is the end of a baby feeding bottle, but there's not much left of it. A bottle down here. Someone and son, Skipton Limited, just can't make out the first word. And the bottle is very glassic, so I'll leave it. That one though. Oh, it's got a bit of glassicness too, but it's a lovely amber beneath. And if nothing else, it'll be a good test piece if I ever build a rock tumbler wide enough for polishing bottles. Do I want to extract that? Oh, okay, I'll give it a go firmly in there, and I do have a scraping tool in my bag, wherever that is. Uh, never mind, I can probably manage without. Yeah. Hmm. Traditional Japanese figures, by the looks of them. Some of them in geisha costumes, inexpertly hand-tinted over transfer printing. I think it might be something I'll take. Don't know if any of the figures cut out would make a reasonable necklace piece. I guess I'll have to take it, just so that I can clean it up and find out. Scott's Emulsion, that's cod liver oil. Yuck. Looks like it's still got some of it in there, and I don't like the bottle enough to want to clean it out. So let's go put the things in the bag, get the scraper out of there. It may be useful, maybe not. We'll see. broken cod bottle. I'm currently in the market for one or two to cut down, so Fred Adderton Skipton. Fairly plain but nice condition. I'll think about it, and in the meantime leave it in a place I can find it again. Tile. Partial piece of. I do like the central bit of a pattern, but I know I couldn't cut it out neatly enough, and I don't like the rest of it much. Reasonably nice colour. Plain, and there does seem to be more glass sickness at this end of the site. Now, what is this? Ceramic. Figurative. Ah, I see. It's a spaniel. A stylized, floppy-eared King Charles spaniel. A bit on the crude side, and not something I have a craft use for. So I'll leave it face up, so if another mudlarker happens upon this spoil pile, they'll see the spaniel and they may well love it. I see a marble, clay marble, the finding of which is nice, but isn't quite the joyous moment that finding a glass marble is. Maybe because these aren't the marbles I grew up with, and they're not the marbles I lost. Now which direction should I go? The Wright Brothers of Skipton with the Bottle Stopper. It's one I've got two of already, and I think Phil might like to find it. He sent a partial one of these off to Adam Gates, fellow YouTubing mudlarker who likes anchors. What else? Yes, I'll get to it. Good things come to those who wait. First of all, I want to see what's not so obvious. Vulcanite Stopper. Fred Adderton. I do think I have a bottle that this would go to, so I'll take it. Ooh, a murder bottle. Possibly actually the most intact one I found in person. Most of the ones I found have had fresh breaks, suggesting that they're really not to the taste of some bottle diggers. Can't say they're to my taste either, such a horrible history to them. A bit of brass. Nozzle of something? Or maybe it's from a pen? Cute little bottle. Oh my, it's a Garten's HP sauce bottle. Must be a sample size. I don't really take sauce bottles very often anymore, but yeah, I'm going to have to take this. Unusual to see building rubble here, and that bottle there, the approximate shape of a Dinnerford's Magnesia, or a Woodward's Chemist, but not the usual size, it's smaller. I'll just put down the things so I can pick it up. McDougall's 
purifier. Awesome. Don't know if this is a quack medicine, but seeing as I haven't heard of it, I suspect it may be. And I like reading about them, so I'll take it, clean it, and read what I can find about it. It's a fairly nice bottle too. Bonus. And this little pot is a maybe, though I know for sure I won't be able to either read or preserve what currently remains of the label. I do find these useful as pen holders. I have many pens. Something interesting poking out. Oh, a cook glass inkwell. I'm not always a fan of cook glass, but I am a fan of inkwells, and I like a bit of brutalist design. And this, I like it. So, yeah, I'll take it. Okay, waited long enough, let's go check out the cod bottle. It's Sharp and Sons of Keefley, and it's mostly intact, a very small chip out of a lip, but the marble is there. And you know what? I'm going to leave it, because I know that Phil and Caroline would absolutely love to find this, so I'm not going to tell them exactly where it is or what it is, but this is a fairly visible spoil pile and I'm going to send them this way. After all, I have two cod bottles now at home that I found, and they haven't found one yet. If they don't find it, I'll be back before we leave. Glasgow, the Camp Coffee and Chicory, so I guess that it's going to be a Patterson's. Yep. This, if it had been intact, this would have absolutely been one I'd take. A Lysol with a now abandoned symbol that's almost the symbol of the Deadly Hallows. Hmm, Harry Potter will inevitably linger long in mind, even as the author alienates me and many others further and further. This is a lineup left by a mudlarker, I think, but Caroline and Phil haven't made it over here yet, and we're the only ones here right now. So this lovely shaped jar with very nice colour and bubbles trapped in the glass, I think I'll take it. Rain is coming, but not yet. Probably not while we're still here. On a day like today, there seems to be no limit to the number of beautiful aqua glass bottles in at least good condition. It's quite overwhelming, really. And when my eyes are overwhelmed by a glut of something, they tend to start ignoring them, searching out the other things. Is that supposed to be an acorn? Ceramic and brass. Not a pull handle, not this way up. I think it must be a finial. It's a bit of brass anyway, so it's an automatic yes from me. Let's see. She seems to be in relatively good condition, just missing a head. And what sort of a head would suit her, do you think? A raven, a hawk, an insect, butterfly perhaps, with wings. 
Or maybe since her dress is so extravagant, a more dowdy wing set of a moth might be a more interesting contrast. Just ideas at the moment, she'll go into a box of partial figurines awaiting an uptick in my creativity. A head of swan or goose? A boating, burst lip and some chips to the lip, but almost intact, and the colour of the glass is just gorgeous. Huh, now what colour glass is that? It's a malted milk powder jar, so the usual options would be clear or amber. So let's see if I can find some sun and see if it shines through. Nope, it's entirely opaque, so that means there's something inside and the way of light getting through, and I don't think I want to deal with that, whatever it is. It's still sealed, so it's unlikely to be soiled, and people kept all sorts of stuff in old jars. The even coloration says it's substance rather than objects, so no, not going to take it. That looks like either a coin or a button button. Looks like it has some decoration, so I'll try to clean it up and see. A soak in warm water, a gentle clean, and maybe some electrolysis should reveal whatever decoration is still there. It's absolutely nothing to go ooh about except for the fact that it's here. I've never known dump sites with so few fragments of old clay pipes. I know I did find the ROAB pipe, but small fragments are usually quite common on a site this age. Clay marble. Nothing else of interest in this hole. I found a brick. Quite a pleasant brick, I think, as bricks go. I do get the appeal, and I've been thinking about possibly going to visit a few derelict brickworks near where I live. Would such urbex content be appealing on this channel? I'm not planning on this being an urbex channel, or starting one, but I do enjoy exploring abandoned buildings. More and more holes appearing right up to and under the fence line. Surprised they're not more trench-like if that's where there's good things to find. A bit untouched, separating two round holes. And that looks like somebody who doesn't wait till they get back to the car to change out of their boots. Wonder if they forgot them, or if they're planning on returning soon. Hope they don't get filled with the rain that I'm expecting to fall this evening. It's not really nice, putting feet into still wet boots. Oh, that's such a gorgeous colour. Heartbreaker is the word that springs to mind. I don't think I really feel that, though. Bottles break, it is what it is, and if it was intact, it wouldn't still be here for me to see. Fairly nice shape, but lacking colour, images or text. Oh, <laughs> Phil appears to be making a tower of teapots. I think of such things for my thumbnail images. Well, I guess because I don't really think about my thumbnail image when I'm out and about, and not really until I'm done editing. Maybe I should. My thumbnail standard is pretty poor. If only my back would allow it. I'm sure I'd enjoy digging a few holes, finding the better bottles that don't get left behind. Fred Adderton, local and a common bottle for miles around. Phil missed a pretty nice broken teapot there. Wind's picking up a bit, hasn't been too bad today so far. Oh, rarity for here, a bit of brass hiding down behind the nettles. Only got a few little stings getting it. 
Not a very common handle, but looks to be fairly standard gauge of gas pipe. I'll take it. Ooh, some copper wire. Ridiculous how that's a thing that gets my excitement level spiking. Maybe it's my deep dark subconscious screaming at me to light up the forge more often. Okay, okay, my subconscious, come up with some interesting projects for the forge and I might. Cut glass, salt cellar maybe, or face powder, seems like a possibility from the colour inside. Quite a nice thing really, I've got too many things in my hand already, but yeah alright, I'll take it. Little baby cob bottle. Wonder if Phil has found the almost intact cob bottle I sent him towards. A visit back to base camp to change camera battery and get a fresh finds bag means a brisk walk straight through all of the places I've meandered backwards and forwards around and around so far. Something I like to add to my videos shows the landscape better. <laughs> this, an entirely separate huge patch of diggings. Last visit was about five months ago, and there was only one hole dug in this area. Now there are loads, might be some good finds here. Enamel sign, in better condition hugely collectible. In better condition though, it wouldn't be here. Deeper hole than the ones down the hill. Interesting. I'd have thought it'd be the other way around. The downhill part follows an old watercourse that was used as a dump site. Up here was obviously used too, and then topsoil put on top. Do bottle diggers ever take ladders to a dig so they can get out of deep holes? Ooh, that's the sort of a battery that I've been asked to take before, for a guy who restores them. I've got to come back this way to my bag, so I can leave it here for now, heavy and grotty as it is. Hmm, unusual. Is it a trough or a guttering? It's the right size for a gutter, but thick ceramic with a yellow glaze would be a very unusual choice. Other ideas, anyone? Master Ink with one more hole than it's supposed to have. The jars and bottles up here look to be slightly worse condition, slightly younger, more clear glass and green, less aqua. Probably a mineral water bottle. Wow, that's a big spoil pile weighing on a thin piece of ground over a very deeply dug overhang. I'm surprised it hasn't collapsed. Bottle poking out down there. Nah. Bottle poking out over there. Not a chance I'm going to try and get that. Ooh, glass bottle stopper. Quite a nice one, think it's of a chemist apothecary style of bottle. Might possibly have one it fits. Looks to be the remains of the label on that one. It's... I'll get there. Turpentine. I like it, but I don't think I like it enough to take it. Bottle stopper that I haven't seen before. Ooh, 
Ugh, no, no, that bottle has been used for something oily and very nasty smelling. Don't want to carry that or have to clean it. Huh, a bit of bamboo. A bit of a rarity in old dump sites, but has been in the UK since the late 19th century, I think. These spoil piles are actually far bigger, far taller and wider than the holes that I can see would account for. Wonder if there are holes beneath, filled in very loosely. Should be careful where I step. Triangular jar. I do like these, but this one does have a lot of glass thickness. I'll leave it. A figurine. Blue and white and a really big basket. I wonder what was in the basket of whoever this was modelled on. There's only four options I can think of. Firewood, fish, washing or bread. If I knew more about traditional clothing of different European countries, I might have a better idea of which it might be. Raspberry jam. It's very unusual to see such well-preserved preserve labels in a dump site. I've seen a few labels surviving here today, and they might be gone tomorrow. There is a little taste of imminent rain in the air, and think it might already be raining on the horizon. Newspapers, amazing how they've survived. Rotted away at the edges, but still as readable as the day they were printed. First clump, sports and adverts. Not the most appealing reading for me. Nosebag bunker. Ha. Huh. What I'm really looking for is the date of this newspaper. It's no guarantee it was put into the dump very soon after the printing date. Just a strong likelihood. It's the Bradford Telegraph and Argus. Celery for health. Yeah, it is pretty healthy. I did look up Argus once and it's a Greek name meaning watchful guardian. No date though. Seems like that was in the bit of the paper that's long gone. Oh well. Starting a pile. It's very spoil pile coloured so far, so need some bright. This white will be visible from a fair way away. Um, something that I might want, and something tall. Another for good measure. And now I can meander again, unencumbered. Part of a seltzer bottle. That would be something that I think Phil Johnson would like for one of his craft projects, a little dump site plinth. Gah, not too bad a throw, but it's rolled down away from the pile and it's not all that visible. Could easily forget it. Best go and put it right in the pile. Baby feeding bottle for Guildford. Okay, slight chip to the lip. This might be another that the Johnsons haven't found one of, and I should go and tell them about this patch. I'm sure that a lot of the things I've seen and won't be taking will be to their liking. They might be making two, maybe even three videos from this visit. I've certainly seen them do two intros so far. I'll wend my way back towards them. Cement bonded asbestos. Almost always see some of it in old dump sites. Not too dangerous if you don't break it. Yet another dry cell battery. Think I'll take only the most complete one today. They're heavy, so is the glass. 
that looks like something that's sparking a memory. Minimax. Okay, I think I know. Yeah, this is a pretty cool find for me. If I'm right in my recollection, it's a refill vial for glass fire extinguisher grenades. I know this because I found a glass fire extinguisher grenade once, empty of original contents. Went reading about them on the internet and found a picture of one of these. I don't know if it's all that rare, but I haven't seen one in real life before. And I think it was probably left because the person who dug it had no idea what it was. It's only by chance that I might, if I'm right. A glass battery there. I take these more often than I'd like. They're heavy, full of lead, vaguely collectible, but probably not with chips out of the bottom. These probably aren't causing much of a problem for the environment. They're nowhere near the nearest river. I might take one of them, the better condition one if I don't have too much weight to carry back to the car. Detailed looking label down there. Let's take a look. Indian sauce, Selby, probably Fletcher's, and possibly Tiger Indian sauce. An insulator there, no copper attached. Very little copper in this site. That's Wow, surprising. Don't know what that is, but it's interesting. Has people embossed on it? Doing what? I don't know. It's incomplete, but worth a clean-up, I think. Still indecipherable. It's going to take more than a rub from a grubby finger. Might be some words on the back. Interesting. Oh wow, there's a full label of Tiger Indian sauce from Fletcher's of Selby. Not sure I can preserve it, but might take it. Another label intact ish. Something like knee paste. Honey paste? That can't be right. Can't read the rest either. The ink's either bled or it's blurred by dirt. I think Caroline's collecting paste jars for a craft project now, so I'll give this to her. Hmm, wasn't I supposed to be heading back to tell Caroline and Phil about this undiscovered country of old bottles? I guess I got turned around a bit. There's the pile though, so may as well add the handful I'm carrying to it. And now I really will head towards telling them. What though is that though? Oh, a battery. Can't take them all. Wow, this would have been quite the whatever it is when it was intact. Even now it's quite something. I have no use for it, but I still kind of like it and want to see how it looks with light shining through it. See if there's any rhyme or reason for the indentations. Looks like an intact insulator. Intact, but squished. Oh, this is a first for me, this type of battery. I've not seen one in real life before. Actually, I'm not sure it is what I thought it was. The glass looks very much like a jam jar. Billy, if you're watching, would people make up Frankenstein batteries out of bits of broken ones? Or was this a genuine thing? I'm so going to regret not taking some of the things I'm seeing here today, but I'll struggle with what I've got already, and I'll probably be helping to carry the Johnson's Hall too. Their turn now. I'm not going to stop looking, but we'll stay behind them and out of their way. remember now, did I put one like this in my bag already? I think I'll leave it. Purple. Well, 
clear glass and purple contents, but it's still a nice little ink bottle, and I do like ink bottles, so I think I'll take it. Phil's just picked up the bottle I put down, and his rucksack is already bulging and very full, so we're using my bag. My fans have only about half filled it. Caroline wants the old newspapers for scrapbooking and crafts, and I'll probably not be putting much else in it. This is a nostalgic find for me. The first poison bottle I found in a video was one like this. A nice, simple, aqua-coloured, prism-shaped bottle. No poison warning, no not to be taken embossed on it, but the prism shape apparently denotes that it held things that definitely should not be ingested. Do I really need another one? No, but I think I want it, so I'll take it. Nice, but too curved for my projects. I don't think it would have been possible for the bottle digger who dug this hole to miss this obvious handle of cutlery. From the shape and size of it, I'd guess a spoon. And yes, think it might be the right shape and size for a First World War British Army standard issue soldier's spoon. If that's what it is, it may well have a soldier ID number or numbers stamped into the handle. I've got one such spoon, but when cleaned up, it had three soldiers' IDs on it. A very sad thing, and I didn't feel inclined to follow up with research. Didn't want to find out which, or how, two of those soldiers died before it was issued to the third. Is that egg cup going to be whole? Oh my, yes. Don't think I've ever found an entirely intact one before. Every other one has had a crack or chips, but this one is fine, and more than that, it's got gilded stripes, a tiny insignificant bit of gold for a potential future video. It's going to take a lot of such pottery to make it worth making a video, but the collection process has begun. Ah, it's a mess. Lots of rust, lots of ceramic, not a lot of what I want. I'll leave it. That's quite sweet, a little thin bottle with the poison stripes on it. Sorry, too many things in hand already. Wonky top, I like it, I'll take it. Seltzer bottle, they're often acid etched and can be quite pretty. Wright Brothers aerated water, Skipton. Shame the bottom is all crunched up, otherwise I think I'd take it and cut the top off. A tiny bottle, very cute. Don't think I've got one quite like this, and most importantly, my girlfriend will like it. And both she and I like these two glass bottle stoppers with lots of bubbles and beautiful glass. Does not look like there's going to be a spectacular sunset today, but that is also fairly spectacular. Spears of sunlight stabbing down through the clouds, dark and mildly moody clouds. But aside from this patchy area around the sun, covering almost the whole sky, have I said yet when I'm filming this? It's early October 2021, no idea when I'll finally upload the edited video. Oh my gosh, that is a big jar. I think, given the relatively narrow width of the top opening, it was probably used for something like preserves or pickles, something relatively small. The body of it is large enough for bigger things like pickled eggs, but the top isn't. And if I can get this clean, oh, then I think it's a leading contender for a terrarium. Does anyone watching make terrariums? And if so, could you advise? Would aquacolored glass be okay for such a purpose? Huh, but of course, an animal on a swing. But what's it supposed to be? A bear, a monkey, a cat? With a tail like that, a cat, I think. And I'll take it, if for no other reason than it's very strange. The clumsy, naive sculpture with gilding on the swing ropes and the outer frame. Wonder if I can track down a picture of the original full thing. It seems like the sort of thing that might have been tourist tat. 
almost at the end. That bag, more than half is mine. There's still room for some of what Phil's carrying. He's got project pieces by the looks of it. Maybe all the pieces of the flagon. I think I saw that over nearby the cod bottle. Which, yes, he did find. So no need for me to go back way over that side of the site to get it. A brand new and expansive patch of digging over that way made this a pretty successful visit here for me, I think. Thanks, bottle diggers. Now a fond farewell to this site, for now. A roundup time. I always have a good time when I'm out and about with Caroline and Phil, and that was a pretty good visit to that site. Oh, the weather was quite blustery and the light was a bit grey. It rained plenty on my way home, but it stayed dry while we were there and we all had fun finding things. Now that they've largely moved on from mudlarking, I really do treasure these videos and for rich details they return to my memories of these little adventures with good friends, far more than I treasure the things that we found. The things that we found, though not as precious as those memories, they do allow some new precious memories to be made. For instance, when Phil sits in his shed and sees the flagon that was fragments when he found them, he'll remember both the finding and the reconstructing of it that he did. Caroline did some artwork with the old newspapers and may well treasure memories of both the day and the making of art when she looks through her scrapbooks. Similarly, for anything I make with my finds, there will be a new memory made of the making. As yet, I haven't crafted with any of this lot. It's all been in a box, waiting for me to edit this video. But now it's out, on display, and inspiring me. I'm itching to go now with a limited series of figurine FEMA augmentation projects, some of which I think will become videos. And this flouncy can-can dancer is a prime contender. Comments on what sort of a head I should give her are most welcome. A few years ago, in an antique shop that I was visiting with a friend who does a podcast. Should I plug his podcast here? Um, why not? Tales of Britain and Ireland, a podcast of stories, legends, myth and folklore from long ago, retold with analysis, often funny and thought-provoking. I'll put a link in the description. And in that antique shop, we saw a figurine, a dancer, without a human head. Instead, she had the bare skull of a crow. It was a fantastic juxtaposition, and that's kind of what I aim for. Not skulls per se, but startling animal-human mixes. For instance, I gave one figurine some tentacles instead of legs. Fairly conventional, but effective. And I'm planning on giving one up a torso for body and legs of a praying mantis. Not sure if I can do much with this one. I like the head and the torso, not so keen on the basket. Maybe I can remove that. I'm sure someone might tell me not to. Suggestions for alternatives are, of course, welcome. Moving on to this. I want to try to cut out a figure or two. There's one I think that could definitely work for a pendant if I can manage some very fine cutting. And if I can manage some even finer cutting and liberate two, then earrings become a possibility. They're not well painted, but they do have style. Kind of. It is not often that I find something that's quite rare. This once quite common but very thin glass that was designed to be disposable has by its fragility and its obsolescence become a rarity. Glass fire extinguisher grenades were on lots of people's mantelpieces just in case their living room fire escaped and tried to burn down the house and they weren't fully sealed so their contents did evaporate and needed to be refreshed from time to time. This held refill material, and it's not particularly pretty, not especially useful. I have no idea how best to display it or keep it intact, but I was and remain very happy to have found it. I'm always happy to find nice ink bottles, and these I think I'll keep. There's quite a few in this lot that I want to keep or do something with. This huge jar, for instance, is certainly a candidate for a terrarium. It does have a little bit of glass sickness, but I have a polishing wheel on my grind machine, and I figure that might be a way of tackling glass sickness on some bottles. I'll probably trial it on a more common one than this, and of course I should ask, has anyone tried that? And if so, any suggestions for a better chance of success? This large amber bottle, if I can get it a bit cleaner inside, and even with the glass sickness, could anything I could find in the UK, plants, mosses, insects, could any of them actually thrive in a terrarium made of amber glass? A warmed up planet Mars sort of an environment. I don't want anything to suffer, so if they would, I wouldn't want to do it. It's just an abstract idea at the moment that I might want to think about and explore. 
On that day I think I saw five of these dry cell batteries. I couldn't carry all of them, and this is the best condition one of them. Billy, if you're watching, I've had a clear out of my dad's shed and found I've got rather more old batteries than I thought I did. Five different sized glass batteries, this ceramic dry cell one and another similar one in slightly worse condition. If you want them all, or just some of them, you're welcome to have them. I found some copper wire, always welcome, a shaving brush that I think the handle is pewter, albeit a version of pewter made with lead. I am hoping to one day extract the tin from it for use in bronze casting. A few oddments of brass, half of which will go into the melt pile. I still don't think I can bring myself to melt down spoons though. This thing, I don't know what it is. The partial image that remains on it seems to be of a disorganised artillery team. There's someone with a telescope taking the range, and someone crouching down with his hands over his ears as if the gun is already being fired. Doesn't the rangefinder do his job first, or am I misunderstanding and he's instead checking to see if the target has been hit? Either way, it's got a ring for hanging from something. I don't know if it's a medal or something more like a horse brass, only made of pewter. Some marbles, pipe bowls and bottle stoppers round out the finds. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have and if you'd like to, then any of this list is most welcome. Pressing the like button or the dislike button, the subscribe button and the bell icon, writing a comment or replying to somebody else's comment, sharing a link to my videos on another platform, it all helps. A big thank you to all of the kind people who've donated through Kofi, Super Chats during premieres, Super Thanks on video pages and purchases from my Amazon wish lists. I am very grateful. I hope you're looking after yourselves and loved ones as best you can. Thank you all very much for watching, and for now, goodbye.